And I would like to introduce Governor Steve Brashear. Thank you. Thank you all very much for letting me come today and share a very special moment, I think, in this area's history. Matter of fact, I'm thrilled to be here today to celebrate a company that saw the future and took advantage of it. Let's start with a couple of statistics. The average growth rate of e-commerce sales in the United States in 2010 was 14.8%. In that same year, sales at trollandtold.com grew 78.6%. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that something? Well, let's hear a round of applause. Yeah. That's more than five times the average in the United States. John and Lana Houston began this company in their home in Tiny TV, Kentucky, and it's grown to be one of the world's leading online retailers of collectible card games and role-playing games. It's ranked 449th in overall e-commerce sales in 2010 by the Internet Retailer Magazine. This is exactly the type of entrepreneurial talent that we want to encourage and nurture here in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. So when trollandtoad.com realized that it needed a bigger facility to house its aggressive growth plans, we were determined, all of us here together, were determined that we were gonna make it happen right here in Kentucky. It's doubly rewarding that it moved, relatively speaking, into the same economic neighborhood, enabling it to retain its more than 100 employees and add 50 more new jobs. I know that all of the judges executive, particularly those of Knox and Laurel County who are with us today, are happy to see both the retained jobs and the new jobs. You know, folks, those numbers 150 when you talk about jobs it's pretty easy to say those numbers but we all need to stop and think for a minute about what that really means because what that really means is that's 150 families that's 150 kentucky families who are able to go to bed at night and put their head down on the pillow with more confidence that they're going to be able to provide that quality of life for their children that they want so badly to do to give them the education they need, to keep food on the table, table and a roof over their heads and clothes on the back. Now, the fact that tollandtrode.com says that it also hopes to create an additional 100 jobs over the next two years, in addition to the 100 that's here and the 50 they've created, that's even better news. And I think let's give them a round of applause. Yeah. Congratulate John and Lana and all of the company executives for the hard work that they are doing. I appreciate very much the investment that they are making in this Commonwealth. Their work to renovate this building, which as I understand it is the largest industrial warehouse in eastern Kentucky. So we've got plenty of room to grow here. I appreciate their confidence in this region. But I want to tell all of you out there in these black t-shirts something. And I know that John and Lana would agree with me. They wouldn't be here today. They wouldn't be as successful as this company has been and will be if it wasn't for the quality, skilled workforce that's in this area, represented by you out there. So let's give all of the employees a <laughs> It's exciting to be here to sort of ceremonially cut the ribbon on this new home for tollandtrode.com with its new production and fulfillment operations as well as a retail store and a tournament center. I'm also proud that the Commonwealth was able to play a role in this through our Kentucky Business Investment Program. This is another example of how the recent modernization of our economic development programs in Kentucky 
has given us the tools that we've needed to work with existing companies to help them grow and help them expand. You know, Ernie mentioned this in his introduction. In the summer of 2009, I asked the legislature to join with me and partner with me in totally revising all of our economic development toolbox articles, things that help us to grow and expand business in Kentucky. And they did that. And I want to publicly thank Senator Tom Jensen, who is here. I saw Representative Jimmy Stewart. Where are you, Jimmy? He's right back here. And all the other legislators for partnering with me on this. Let's give Senator Jensen a <laughs> Folks, that strategy is working. Not only do you see it working right here, but it's working all across Kentucky. Since the summer of 2009, when we took those steps, 330 companies have received preliminary approval for one or more of those new economic incentive programs. Those 330 companies represent over $3.4 billion in new capital investment in Kentucky, over 19,400 new jobs for Kentuckians, and 6,200 existing jobs that will still be here because we were able to work with existing business and keep them in Kentucky. Those projects also, in addition to this one, in this area include Skylift in Laurel County, CSC in Knox County. We worked aggressively over the last few years to help our Kentucky businesses by also resisting pressures to raise taxes. You know, it's been a tough time these last three and a half years, and obviously there's some temptation when you're trying to balance a budget, which I've done now nine times in the last three and a half years. We've cut over a... You know, we've cut over a billion dollars in spending out of our budget to keep it balanced. But we've resisted two things. Number one, we've resisted higher taxes because that's exactly the last thing that we need to do while we're all trying to work our way out of this recession. You know, Illinois, our neighbor to the north, just raised its personal income tax rate 66%. Just raised its corporate tax rate 45%. We haven't done that, and we're not going to do it. Also, there are a number of states who have made drastic cuts to so many vital programs, education, New Jersey just laid off 3,500 teachers. Several other states have cut millions of dollars out of their education budget. But when I have balanced that budget nine times, and each time I've had some folks say, well, Governor, just cut everything across the board. Cut education, cut veterans, cut all the other things. I've said no. Now, that's the easy thing to do. I grant you that. But I think the people elected us to make hard decisions, and so we've made those hard decisions. Instead of cutting everything, we prioritized what I felt like Kentuckians felt was the most important. And the number one thing that we prioritized was educating our children. And we have kept from cutting our education budget, we have kept from cutting economic development, we have kept from cutting Medicaid, and folks, because of that, as we start coming out of this recession, and we are now, it's slow, but we're coming and we're moving in the right direction. We are in so much better position than most of these other states to grab a hold of the opportunities that are going to be out there for us. And so I'm excited about what the future holds for us. Not satisfied yet, because while we're starting to come out of this recession, we've still got way too many people out of work. And I know that and you know that. And I'm not going to be satisfied until we get all of our people back to work. But we've got this ship now moving in the right direction, and we're going to keep it on course. And part of the way we keep it on course is encouraging the entrepreneurship of folks like John and Lana and others that have worked with them to make this such a successful company. Let me also tell you this. These things don't just happen. They happen because a lot of people work together to make them happen. Now, you all know, for instance, that our elections are partisan, and that's fine. You know, every, every time we have an election, we have partisan elections, and we get out and we all go after it. If you're a Democrat, if you're a Republican, you're an independent. But I'll tell you something. 
I think after elections are over, the people of this state expect us to consider them Kentuckians first and Democrats and Republicans second. That's the way. That's, that's the way we've governed the last four years, and that's the way I'm going to continue to govern. And things like this happen because a lot of folks sitting around me work with us, and we're all of different parties. But that doesn't matter. What matters is the future of this state. What matters is your future and your children's future. And that's why I'm so proud to work with a lot of these elected officials around here and the economic development folks. Laurel County Judge Executive David Westerfield and the Fiscal Court. Knox County Judge Executive J.M. Hall and his Fiscal Court. London Mayor Troy Rudder, Corbin Mayor Willard McBurney. Executive Director Charlie Pennington. Board Chair Ernie House. The team at the London Laurel County Industrial Authority. The Director Bruce Carpenter the team at the Corbin Economic Development Agency. Folks, those folks helped make this happen. And we owe a round of applause to all of those folks. I've got a little gift that I'd like for, for John and Lana to come up and accept. John Atlanta, this is just a small token of our appreciation on behalf of the Commonwealth for your entrepreneurship, your ideas, your drive, your aggressiveness, aggressiveness that it caused this success to happen. And what this is is a flag of the Commonwealth of Kentucky that we would love to see flying over your plan. <laughs> When Lana and I moved here 17 years ago, little did we think that we would come to this point here. But during the last 17 years, as we've moved from one location to another, and have grown to become more and more in love with the country and the people of Kentucky, we realized that the reason for our success today the number one reason is because of the people of Kentucky. This is from as people as high as the governor, who I thank for coming down, and for people as low, perhaps, as someone we hired last week to be a janitor to clean our toilets. These are all things that help our company succeed. Thank you very much.